The untold story of Ravana. The soul of Indian mythology is beyond simple good and evil. There is an interesting story at every step if one wants to delve deeper. Ravana played the role of the villain, but why he played this role is a very important question. It was really meant to bring balance to the equation of good and evil. No wonder he is still worshipped in some parts of the world. Ravana was the grandson of Pulestya, one of the greatest sages and Saptarishas of Indian mythology. He was born to sage Vishravana and Asura mother Kaikashi. Hence he is considered half Asura, Daman, and half Brahman, sage. Ravana is known as the supreme antagonist in the ancient Hindu epic Ramayana. He is depicted as a demon and the great king of Lanka. He is known as the demon with ten heads. But not many people know that he was not born with ten heads. Ravana was actually a great follower of Lord Shiva, a great scholar, an excellent ruler and a veena player. He wrote two books. Ravana Sanhita, Book of Astrology, and Arka Prakasham, Book of Siddha Medicine. He was well versed in the dark practices of Ayurveda and black magic. It is said that he could control the position of the planets as per his wish. He had the Pushpakaviman, a flying chariot, which he had won from his half-brother Kubera. He had mastered Tantra Vidya, the science of creating optical illusions of thought, which he used in battle against his enemies. Once when Ravana tried to lift Mount Kailash, Lord Shiva crushed his forehead under the mountain and then Ravana started praising Lord Shiva and sought forgiveness. Lord Shiva was so pleased with Ravana that he danced with full fury and passion and this dance was called Tandava and the chants came to be known as Shiva Tandava Strotam. After getting education, Ravana did severe penance on the banks of river Narmada to please Lord Shiva. To please the Lord, Ravana cut off his head and each time he did so, the head grew back and this continued ten times allowing him to continue his penance. Thus Lord Shiva gave ten heads to Ravana which he had sacrificed. Because of these ten heads, he is also called, Deshmukh. Ravana's ten heads symbolize the six Shastras, the sacred texts of Hinduism consisting of four categories, Shruti, Smriti, Purana and Tantra, and the four Vedas, which Ravana mastered making him a great scholar and one of the most intelligent beings. Became one of times. He was proficient in 64 types of education and all the arts of weaponry. He is known to have compiled the Vedas with relevant musical swaras, notes, and his Shiva Tandava Stotra is one of the most popular hymns ever sung in praise of Lord Shiva. Another interpretation of Ravana's ten heads is the ten emotions. Those emotions are, Kama, Lust, Krodha, Anger, Moha, Delusion, Lobha, Greed, Mada, Pride, Matsarya, Jealousy, Manas, Mind, Buddhi, Intellect, Chit, Desire, and Arrogance, Arrogance. Hindu traditions emphasize the importance of controlling one's senses and pursuing only the intellect, which is considered supreme over others. The use of other emotions is considered harmful to the development of the soul. Once, the great king Mahabali advised Ravana to give up these nine emotions and have only intelligence, which he justified by saying that having all these aspects is equally important and makes him a complete human being. One head of Buddhi controlled his destiny and the other head of Ravana controlled his actions which ultimately led to his destruction. Ultimately he became a slave to his senses and since he could not control his desires, he not only destroyed himself and his plan but also burnt the whole of Lanka to ashes. Despite having so much knowledge, not being able to use his powers was one of his biggest regrets as he was dying on the battlefield. He regretted not having put his knowledge into practice in his life, which eventually led to his downfall.